So, <laughs> hello everyone. I understood before the show today that women are like herding cats. Is that true? Could that possibly be true? Only in John's world. Oh, is that true? <laughs> yes, I've never had a cat, so I can't. Exactly. <laughs> or maybe all men. I don't know. But, <laughs> but welcome into primetime. It's Women Unscripted today. We are minus one. Yes. We're missing yes. our share bear. Aw, share. And she's off today. Uh, she kind of like double booked. Both fat little rascal, but she she's got a lot going on. she had a party too. tonight? She had a party she last night. She a party, night, party without tonight. us. She's just a party girl, right? <laughs> So welcome back. It, it seems like we were just here, right? We were. No, I know. It's that's how fast. I and Helena Tringata, also known as Tinker Bella, <laughs> and the traveling woman speaker, ambassador of happiness of the world, Miss Maura Sweeney. Maura <laughs> for you, Maura for me. I always love to say that. So welcome back. We had uh, we had so a crazy a, month it in September. So Italian or something. When yeah, you've had I, Maura right. for you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. That's from hanging around with you and Joe. <laughs> that's right. But we did have a crazy month in September. September. And we all talked about that. In case you missed that show in September, whew, we were glad I can to get to that. go back and then. find it in the archives, right? And you can. If you go to webeamtv.com and you click onto the archives, you'll be able to find our past shows. A long time ago, you can find those shows and everything. But we were talking about, you were hunkered down in the closet. Was doing the doing Hurricane a podcast, Irma show. Yes. And then throwing up after that. <laughs> and so, and then you were just trying to find safety somewhere. And uh, I was doing a lot of praying and evacuating. So we all managed to get through that. Now we're going through, gosh, it's almost a full month. Uh, two months, actually. Well, no, one month. And then we're going month into and, Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, less than a month of Thanksgiving. Yeah. So the next time we will be here... We will officially have been giving thanks on Thanksgiving. So we thought in the show today, we came in, as usual, pretty well unscripted. But there's a lot to be thankful for. There's a lot to be grateful for. And um, I know you have some announcements because you were rocking your babies today. Mm -hmm. You know, let me tell you something about this girl. Every Monday morning, she rocks babies. Why do you do that? They own my heart. They own your heart. They own my heart. That is <laughs> that is like the very best answer. Oh, my gosh. Just, um, you know, because of HIPAA laws and all, I can't say much. But right. I, I just have to tell you that um, if you ever experience it and, and you don't enjoy it, obviously it's not for you. But when you do experience, you know, I... It makes my week if I get to see my babies, if I get to see the babies. And, of course, most of them are only there that one time. Some of them are there more than one time. Um, you know, they're in various stages of health, healthiness or not. They're in a NICU, obviously. They're either preemies or they have um, some issues. And it's it just, it's something that you if you've not experienced it you'll just never know how wonderful it is i mean they give much more to me than i can give to them and um some of them i'll just have to say this one little part some of them know they've been abandoned mm -hmm. and i can see it in their eyes they lay there they're all swaddled up in their little crib and their their eyes are vacant it's just oh it's just the scariest thing and they don't cry some of them don't cry because they know there's no, they, somehow they know, they know that there's no one who cares about them, that they've been abandoned. And obviously they're going to go into the system and they're going to probably be adopted. And, and I pray and I um, wish them much love. You know, I tell them they're loved. I tell them they're brave and strong. But um, those are the ones I want to pick up the most because I want them to feel the love right then. You know, because they're not, they're, I usually get the crying babies, but when they're not crying, it's actually more of a reason that they need to be held. And um, that doesn't happen every time, but I have seen it where they just look like, I know that there's nothing I can do here, so I might as well just keep my mouth shut and sleep. You know? That's really, that's, you know, when you first told me some of these stories, because you've been doing this now for a good little while. Yeah, it's a, it's a I think about a year and a half, I'm going on too. Yeah. yeah, and 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 even before that, Helena's also been involved with. Um, it's now John Hopkins All Children's Hospital, and of course she's pulled me in to <laughs> MC some events, which I've done. And you know, when it comes to the children, we all have kids. You know, you can never do too much for them. And I know I'm grateful to have been involved with it, but you know, just to know that you're giving mm -hmm. that that slice of life and love. For these babies you feel like I feel like if, if you 
give them this love, you, you know, at least it's a good start. You know, you don't know what they've been through before they're born. Sure. You don't know what they're going to be through after you right. leave. Mm -hmm. But if you can be love for them and be totally, you know, I know some of them have stories that are scary. Um, but I'm not about that story. I'm about just being love mm -hmm. for them and mm -hmm. sharing with them how beautiful they are. And I mean... Recently, we had a baby, and the nurse said to me, she is really ugly. It's too bad she's a girl. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I and so she has to be told she's beautiful, of right? Course. Because she she needs to get a running start in this life. Aww. You know? <laughs> and you share that love from your heart yeah, for this yeah, little you know, one. So I tell her how beautiful she is and how she's, you know, her love is going to make her look beautiful to everyone else because you know when you have love in your heart it doesn't really matter what you look mm -mm. like mm -mm. um you know people are going to see the love in your in your eyes i'm such a firm believer in love begins from within and lands mm -hmm. on the skin however that be it always does and you can always tell when there's love in someone's heart because it really does come through the eyes and what you said about that and, and seeing that vacant stare and everything that brought me to tears I, I was really speechless when you shared that with me because mm -hmm. you have that hands-on and um, these are things that I didn't know of what was going on in my own community so thank you for being that, well, that Tinker Bella yeah. all around town yeah and you do. And of course, Maura. Can I wait before you say anything about me. I need to keep <laughs> up on her. this. All right, here's what I'm thinking. And this is like a, a moment for anybody who's listening today that they would translate what you just spoke about into their own lives. Mm -hmm. You know, before we even have words, we know how to receive love, but we also know what it's like. You're saying these little children, they already know they're abandoned. There's a pre-language that we have. We do not need to learn words to understand feelings. No. What you are doing and imparting, you may be just the presence of love that when these children get older, they may not even know where it came from. They oh, may sure. not see mm -hmm. a physical presence mm -hmm. anywhere in life, but they have already experienced love and compassion. Yeah, I think so, of it as a basis, you know, you oh, know how you talk gosh, about, you know, yes. and even in the Bible, we talk about building the house on yes. a good foundation. And so the, all the love they can take out of that um, experience so much better for them and we have loving nurses you know who talk to them like they're just little pumpkins you know because it's the holiday for pumpkins, <laughs> pumpkins you know so, so i mean it's you know and they tell them they're beautiful and you know it's not obviously it's not just me i'm there four hours a week but we have other cuddlers that do just the same thing our nurses our staff are fantastic but they have to be much more concerned with the health care of that baby all i have to be concerned about is giving love and, and so, that's what we need in this whole it entire is. world is, is more love. So if there's somebody listening today and you think, oh, you know, I've got extra time on my hands or I know I have something to give, but I don't know what it is. Or I don't even think I have anything to give. Yeah. Everybody has some love to give. Yeah. And you know how you were describing, you said you have to be in that moment. I would think that to be in that moment, you are not only giving love, but you are also receiving oh, love. Yeah. Oh, there is a yes, bond that yeah. goes back and forth. So maybe there's somebody mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. that maybe it'll be at a neonatal. Mm -hmm center. Maybe it'll be at a local library volunteering to read to little children. Maybe it's a rent-a-grandparent. It could be anything. Maybe it's someone who sees a young person who needs a little mentoring, but you're just there to be a listening ear, to be kindness, to be love personified. And what? This, oh, and that, that is so beautiful, you know, Can I just Helena? give a little um, shout out for volunteers at this time? Because um, my mom died at 72, but she didn't live the last 10 years of her life. She just existed. And she loved babies. And you know what? She, they would have loved her to come in and, and rock babies somewhere, I'm sure. But we have volunteers at the hospital that are um, in their 80s. And they go every day or they go on a regular schedule. Some of them go two and three times a week because this is not only just their... They feel good about themselves. It yes. gives them a reason yes. to live, you know, because so many people die because they have no reason to live. That's they're right. depressed. They're, you know, they're sick. Mm -hmm. They're this and that. But I know that these people who volunteer in this hospital have a more joyful life and that they live a better life because they're there. That's and right. it doesn't matter because right. we have, all, we have, I don't even know like 600 volunteers there or something. Oh my goodness, so, I mean, and your you husband's have, one. Yes, he volunteers in the ER. Yeah. And so it's, um, I encourage you, if you think that you, you know, whatever, if it's not rocking babies, you know, go in and just give somebody a smile. You're you know, right. in a it in a volunteer. Change. And it could change hospice a day. wants volunteers. Oh I mean, there's so many places that oh. will take volunteers. Now you probably even know more of them. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I mean, we do our village show and we bring people in that are giving back in the community. We do my chamber TV that's on Wednesdays at 3.30. We have the Christian chamber. Um, so you can tune in to WeBeam TV and, and really listen to some of the guests in the show and we but, can turn you on to anybody in the community. But if you're having a pity party, get off of it and get out there and help mm -hmm. somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because if you help somebody else, it's turned Joe's life. Yeah. Joe is, I, I, we probably said this when Joe was here and you may have heard it, but he was the kind of one who always donated money, threw money at, you know, at not-for-profits. So this is really the first time he's gone and given of himself. And it has changed his life his whole attitude yeah. i have to say and he's very um dedicated yes, he doesn't want to run late and he always wants to be there right and i think that's yeah. it's good for joe too it's very good for joe yeah. and even though he you know sometimes he gets a little flack he was saying today was like a really busy busy day and they didn't have enough wheelchairs and they were doing this and that and and he came out of there limping but you know what he's going back tomorrow because See? that's his schedule and right. that's what he wants to do right. and I, I just encourage everyone who's got an extra well in this case this hospital it's four hours a week but i really encourage you to to go out and volunteer somewhere like hold I your said, thoughts i'm being told we've got to take a break and we'll be right back at a certain age so this is supposed to happen no it's not supposed to happen. at a certain age so this is supposed to happen no it's not supposed to happen it, it is. is it is and I you know. don't even need words for it so we're back so more bring us back hi everybody <laughs> welcome back to women unscripted i'm afraid you were going to say to me who is it and i forgot the ladies i'm with this is bad <laughs> Helena Trangata, <laughs> we were yeah. just hearing a beautiful story about in volunteering, helping prenatal babies, right? Mm -hmm. Prenatal, not really prenatal, what do you call it? Neonatal babies, yes. Mm -hmm. And our hostess with the mostest. Oh, sure. Barbara Marvell Kelly, Thank who's you throwing things into my hands and I'm throwing them right see, back see, over to I you should, again. Should, she could, either one of you guys could just take the show and run with it. <gasps> not and really. you may Wait someday. a minute. This is what, <laughs> should I tell you the funny story? Now? I want to hear Funny okay. story. Oh, You're all we about get happiness. Let's I hear arrive it. late with my husband because lots of traffic coming up here. I have no idea of what the latest unscripted women's event is going to be about today. <laughs> so I want to know. And Barbara said, I think we're going to have you introduce everybody. I said, oh, you can't do that, Barbara. I don't like that. Now, here's a funny thing. I said, if you do that, I'm going to have to write everybody's name down on a piece of paper. 
and it's not has nothing to do with age. I've always been this way. A couple of years ago, two friends and I had a um, a Saturday radio show here in Tampa Bay, terrestrial radio, and we always had this one woman open up. She was out of town. And so they said, well, Maura, why don't you open the show? Never wanted to do it. We oh, Before we get ready, I'm busy. I have only one co-host with me, mind you. And I already know the name of the show. It's called The State of Happiness. So I'm writing things down. She said, what are you doing, Maura? I said, I'm writing down what I'm going to say when we all go live on the radio. And she said to me, why are you writing down these names? I said, well, because I might get on and forget your name, Diane. Diane Cutts, my girlfriend. And also my podcasting uh, voiceover. She said to me, well, I could understand maybe you want to write my name down, but you realize you're writing your own? I said, because I just might forget my own name too. <laughs> but for the record, I am Maura Sweeney. <laughs> Oh, and Elena Train got in for Morville Kelly. But do you know <laughs> I uh, since I was little <laughs> since I was little, I yep. could meet somebody be in a big conversation and then somebody says, Would you like to introduce these people? And immediately it's like fear. I don't I just go blank out and I can't remember who people are. Isn't hmm. that you know, and that's everybody's fun. got their fears. They do, they do. You know, I got a funny story to tell you too, and you probably heard this a gazillion times. When I started at the home shopping network, yes. and Bob Sarcosta, the billion dollar man, right? <laughs> He was training me, and uh, just before that, I was going through these note cards, and I had to go and pitch a phone, present a necklace and earrings and all that. So I was making my notes, notes after notes after notes, and trying to memorize in what order I was going to put all these in, right? Yeah. So I thought it was going to be fabulous, because I really put a lot of thought and a lot of time and effort into it. So I go up there, and I do my presentation. I thought I really nailed it kind of sorta and I got off camera and he walks up to the podium he says where are your notes I go right here and I thought he was gonna say they're great <laughs> he took them ripped them right up this true honest to goodness story <laughs> and threw them out He goes, now go up there and sell the necklace and earrings and you did better mm -hmm. because it came <gasps> more from the heart than from the head and of course that's how I live my life and so many people are coming more around that and um, so I can relate to exactly what you're saying try that next time next time oh I do it all the time and then I forget but you know one See? thing I will say my husband will always call me the brilliant scatterbrain in certain <laughs> areas of my it. life where's Jim I, we had to bring Jim out he's here. hiding oh, he's, he? he likes being behind the scenes he's going but he he's going like here this. safely but the crazy thing is, I can be really good in certain arenas, and then other areas, you look at me and you think, is this lady for real? Do I know? A couple of times my husband and daughter have said, we don't know this lady. <laughs> because I, have, I remember we were once in Slovenia, I think, on a family vacation. We were in some community, and someone spoke to me in English, and he said, would you be kind enough to sign this petition? And I said to her, Mom, sorry, we don't speak English. My daughter was about 12. She looked and she said, Mom, that's our language. We speak English. And I'm busy thinking this guy's talking to me in the Slovenko language. It was just uh, these things I do all the time. It's scary. But let me just speak about get, being oh, authentic. Being authentic. Think about this. And we were having this conversation before we went on live. Everybody really is moving from being transactional and trying to be perfect to being really who they are from the heart. That's so true. And one thing about me, I can't be fake. So I can't even fabricate anything. So this is it. You get me and you get all the other crazy things that go with me. But you know what? It's part of it is endearing. It is very Unless endearing. Unless you get insulted that I can't remember your name. Oh, my goodness. But you know what? That's the fun, that's the fun of this whole thing is being it real. Is. And all people appreciate real. it. And we were talking about that earlier. Um, and it has to do with that level of conscious level, that consciousness level as to where we are in our life. And, and Tinker Bello and I were sitting here saying, well, we've got a few years on you, Maura Sweeney. <laughs> it's I all relative. I don't know Not what that, that maybe in that gap <laughs> period where you get that what care I attitude and you know who you are. And if you make a mistake, you know what? It's okay. Perfection is only a direction, as my husband is constantly reminding me. So when I kick into my OCD mood, mood and I have to have everything, just, you know, or whatever, and he reminds me that, you know what, perfection is only a direction. That is such a great message, too. It is. But, you know, I'm thinking about something. You were saying, or you're a few years ahead of me, and you're saying maybe it happens then. You just a get lot. happy being who you are. <laughs> I've heard people say, and I heard this a long time ago, that um, when you get to be around 50, 
You just don't have to please anybody. You are who you are. But here's another thing. There are young people today. They uh, almost come from a different place. Mm -hmm. They're not as structured in the way they think in terms of having to be somebody perfect when they're out there. And they could be very young and feel very free to be who they are mm -hmm. from their heart. Mm -hmm. exactly. Not having to try to please anyone or not, let me say that, that better. Let's say not having to be plastic or um, have a facade, but just being who they are. And I think at some level, we all do better when we're our natural state. Oh, absolutely, because you don't have to put on the dog. But it's a lot of work. Maura, you are the perfect example of living somebody else's life for many, many, many years and oh. meeting that persona. <laughs> And you almost became a lawyer, right? We always go back to that we story. We always go back to that story because, you know what, it's such a great story for anybody that's watching Women Unscripted. You you never know what to expect here. So our conversation kind of goes here, kind of goes there, because we are unscripted. But it's such a great story due to the fact that you were living somebody else's dream for you. Yes. And you finally said, enough, I'm not doing that anymore. You know, Barbara, yes, it was. And it wasn't just living someone else's dream in terms of the fact that I was supposed to be practicing law up in the New York, New Jersey metro area, which was what I was groomed for. But it was more than that. And this is why I'm so passionate about everything I speak about today, how to be a good, a, a good leader, how to be a person of influence, how to live from the inside out, how to be happy from the inside out. Mm -hmm. It's not just that I was going to move myself into a career, but it was everything. It was not being able to express my desires the way I wanted to. I wasn't dressing the way I wanted to. I wasn't getting involved in and activities that were meaningful for me. So because of that background of being the facade, or I used to call it the window dressing, I was very much the window dressing. And sometimes I even look back at some things I wrote and I'm still looking to break through and to be more and more of myself um, because it takes some time to come mm -hmm. out of the closet when you are very uh, groomed and scripted to be mm -hmm. someone you are not, but yet to come out, really there's more energy, there's more love, as we were speaking about it, there's more life, there's a greater sense of self-acceptance, but that energy <clears throat> and that consciousness, it just flows out of each person that lives there and they tend to bring other people there as well. Exactly. It's an awareness. We become a magnet that way because yes. people wanna be around you and hear this kind of validation. Can I add one more thing? Of course okay. you can. Over the weekend, I was um, on the east coast of Florida speaking at a women's conference connected with uh, Patrick Air Force Base. But it was strictly for women. It was all about renewing and whatever. And I brought a picture of me when I was 15 years old. Now, people would not know that. If you were to look at me at age 15, I looked like I didn't have a friend in the world, like I had lost my best friend, Ooh. that I was totally lost. And you know when you talk about the energy? The energy on me was so heavy, and it's amazing that when you start going from within and you follow what you like and you're being true to yourself, mm -hmm. and really, you know something, if we're truly honest with ourselves and we get mm -hmm. rid of so much of that excess, what comes out is quite pure and beautiful and yeah. lovely and, and just full, full of life. And sometimes surprising. Yes, eat to ourselves as well as yes. others. Yes. I think there's a much better world if we would all kind of step out. Yes and be our own natural self. That's why that's the best version. What, that's why I love doing this show is because we all bring something to the table. We have new guests that come on. Uh, Cher is a great life coach and always gives some great tips. And Tinker Bella is who she is, exactly. just fluttering her wings around in the community, just <laughs> sharing her love fairy dust, if you will. <laughs> well, I'm not sharing things like, it's all about the shoes. <laughs> I had to just bring this and say, and it's, and it's really about all about the love. We all know that, but it's just such a cute bag. I had to share it, <laughs> and boo y'all. <laughs> so they were, they they were talking about doing a Halloween show, and I said no way because I don't do Halloween. You did last time very though. much, and we did it last time, and it was stressful. Was that when so, you wore that hair that hat? No. Uh -uh. Well, when did you wear that hat that you, we dressed up? I don't know. I just... Oh, wasn't it? Um, I don't know. I, I'm having a senior. <laughs> I'm thinking, I didn't get the memo about it being Halloween show, and I don't look good in orange. I did. That's I part of me send, being me. I don't look good one. in orange. I didn't send a Halloween memo. I didn't. No, I just no. Said, you know, we were just unscripted like, today, just so. ready for winter. Right. The one day that we get here, right? <laughs> this is shocking. I know. 
<laughs> it was freezing shocking. today. I'm thinking, wow, what am I going to wear around Christmas that's so time? That's cute. I love that's a great color. It's nice it. and cozy, but it's velveteen. This is how chilly I, it is I know. today. We, we'll pack it up and put it away. Velveteen pants. We all have boots on. Steve, boots. We got our boots on. We're we're ready for snow. Your boots are made for walking. Exactly. The one chilly day in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> did you did we mention in that first segment we had to take a break about what's coming up? That's at the right. Quarter auction. No, we didn't. Okay, you want to uh, so, tell everybody about um, this. <clears throat> All Children's Hospital has um, guild, a guild that is part of our foundation for raising funds, and I am the president of the North Pinellas Guild, and we are having a quarter auction on Sunday at East Lake Woodlands Country Club mm -hmm. from one to four. And if you have not been to a quarter auction, they're a lot of fun. You come in with a roll of quarters. Um, you, we have gifts that you can bid on. So it might be uh, a necklace and earrings and it, the price on it might be $50, but you would bid three quarters for it. So you bid three quarters for it, you throw the quarters in there and everybody who bids gets a little number paddle. That is so cool. And I hear so a fun. one person will win, the, one person will win the, the necklace and earrings, but you know, the, we raise the money by throwing the quarters in and the, um, the vendors get to keep the quarters, or hopefully they donate them. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is our new venue for us um, using East Lake Woodland Country Club. Um, it's right down the road from our outpatient center, which is on Tampa Road. We're um, very excited about it because it could be a home for us. We've, we've mm -hmm. changed our venue many times, and it doesn't really help bring our people back to the same place because they don't know where we're going to be. So it's $15. I think John is putting up uh, the uh, information on who to call to get tickets. It's this Sunday, November 5th. It's hard to believe that this Sunday is going to be November 5th, uh, 1 yeah. to 4, and that's also the day the time goes forward. So we want you to be there 1 to 4 at East Lake Woodlands Country Club. It's $15, and it is a family-friendly event, so bring the kids, bring the husband, and you're welcome to... Um, join us and uh, we do meet once a month at East at um, the outpatient center on Tampa Road if you'd like a volunteer opportunity let us know <laughs> that, is, that is so and there it is there's the flyer and uh, so you can check that out and I am so proud of you and you've just become president of this group. in May mm -hmm. yeah well I was acting president before that because so it's official the other president wasn't quite um, into the uh, uh, healthy. She wasn't healthy at that okay. time. She, I see. She had some see. health challenges. So, so anyway, so you like, are really stepping into your greatness <laughs> that you were born with, my dear, and doing quite a job <laughs> at it. Oh, well. The last uh, <laughs> event we did, which was this year, I emceed down at the Safety Harbor Spa. Mm -hmm. Spa with uh, it was a fashion show, and it was absolutely incredible. And they actually had the ambulance there that we were, you know, raising money to. You know, it, you did a tour. It was it was so cool. Well, this for is what babies. we raise. We have a commitment. Each um, the guild as a whole has a commitment for four million dollars over a four year period. So it's a million dollars a year, and the monies this this four year period is for this ambulance, which is a real high tech super duper ambulance uh, made to carry babies without having them have the trauma that an actual other type of ambulance mm -hmm. uh, would carry. So we got the ambulance and then the rest of our monies, I'm not saying the ambulance is paid Gotta take for. a break, hold <laughs> that, we'll finish that up, we'll be right back. <laughs> At a certain age, so this is supposed to happen. No, it's not supposed to happen.
at a certain age, so this is supposed to happen. No, it's not supposed to happen. Well, we can do yeah. that. What would you like that, to talk about now? I was about to say, what's the next topic? I, I would like to you talk about, you know, when we talk about reevaluation and, yes, and yes. in October or in the fall and where are we going and, and mm -hmm. gratitude. I think we really should, like, each of us say something that we're, you know, certainly grateful for. Well, you know, the October month, um, since I've known Helena, and little did I realize that we were kind of looking at our lives in the month of October. I don't know if you have a time to do that more or not, but we've been kind of doing that. For me, it just was... Um, gosh, I, so many things happened about 12 years ago for me in October that I had these emotions up, down, up, down. I had left my job at the Home Shopping Network, had a birthday, lost my mom, celebrated my, my wedding. wedding anniversary, and all these like up, down roller coaster rides. And so it has really become that, that month for me to not only celebrate, but also to appreciate and to really count my, my, gratification for all the things that I've seen and done in my life and can really count my blessings. And then taking a look at what's coming up in the new year, looking what we've accomplished in this past year, how I personally, Barbara Marville, can make a difference in this world. And I plan on doing that, continuing to do that right here by bringing people like yourselves on and just giving a message out because you know what? The world is so volatile right now. If if we affect one person's life out there with one comment, one crazy joke, one funny story, even you know, a it, smile, it, even even a, a smile, smile to someone in the grocery store, uh, that is so true. You know, I I go to Aldi where they, you get the quarters you put in for the cart. Oh yeah, you were telling me about that guy. And there's this very young gentleman in a wheelchair there every time, and he parks his wheelchair right by the carts in hopes that somebody will give him their quarter. And oh. so when the first time he was there, you know, I thought, hey, I don't need this quarter right now. I may someday, but this guy needs it more. So he has a little tray there with, he had three or four quarters yesterday, and I, here's another one. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just, you don't know what their circumstances are, regardless of what they're using those quarters for. This is a human being with a beating heart. And if you can't give back even a quarter, a dime. I know one time I had a whole package of change and I was going out the Publix shopping center and there was a young fella standing on the side with his dog. And I just took, like that was for washing my car, all those quarters. I just took the quarters and I said, this is all I have. And he was just so grateful. What he was using that for, I don't know, but because he's a human being and and, I, just, I was compelled. And you have a heart for dogs. You, and I have you a heart thought for that dogs. he would help. That would feed his dog. I remember you telling me that yeah, story. Yeah, it was. That was that was very heartwarming. But um, so you know, having you guys come on and and talk about different, just anything that we're talking about that can help give back to let you know that we are three <clears throat> real women, unscripted. We do make mistakes and do crazy things. Forget. <laughs> Remember, even our own names, but remembering really a lot more positive things and trying to just push the, the negativities aside. So, Tink, oh. what do you think? Well, and, and when you're talking about that, I think about the fact that, you know, we we are all grandma age and uh, you're come, bringing up the rear there, but we all are grandma age. And in fact, the you know, remember when you used to think about nice. grandma sitting in a rocking chair on yes. the porch and they're mm -hmm. just rocking, rocking. We're doing all but that. We're doing everything but that. Which doesn't mean that I don't like the the idea of that at times, but I I I too reevaluate in October, and I look at what have I done this year that has been good for my business, good for my family, good for the community, and then I think, well, what am I? How am I going to change this up for next year? So, um, and some of it just falls in your lap, like this being president, you know, just kind of, I, I was kind of forced into it. So it wasn't like I planned Like that. you would have said no. <laughs> but I, um, I think it's important to reevaluate because we can get stuck in a, in a mold. And, you know, what they say about, um, I've heard the term that a grave is just so, a hole that you can't dig out of. It's something that, you know, we just mm -hmm. walk it enough and it, beco it becomes a rut and then it becomes mm -hmm. our grave. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if I don't reevaluate, then I could be stuck in a rut and then that could be my grave. And I don't, you know, especially with my mother, um, as I said earlier, you know, kind of not living her last 10 years, 
I'm close to the time that she died. And so I, I just feel like, oh, I have got to, to do everything I want to do before life ends, you know, whenever it ends. You know, I'm not really looking at that. I, and there's a lot of things I want to do, you know, this, um, not to go on about it, but, you know, I'm, I'm really involved in this opioid epidemic because this oh is what's causing a lot of the issues mm -hmm. that are in the communities and all. So I, I, um, I'm very involved in that part of it as well and, and helping people tell their stories. But I'm so grateful that I have every day. You know, what are we grateful for going into the Thanksgiving month? I believe in writing those gratitudes every day because I do it for me, but it also helps other people because we, you know, I can be grateful for reading glasses. I mean, you know, just simple little things like I don't have prescription glasses. I have reading glasses, but I have them in every room in my house. And I'm so grateful because when you can't see and you can't read, it's, it's debilitating, and I'm just grateful that I can read and see and talk, and mm -hmm. and I, um, you know, there are people who certainly can't. And yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. You know, I had a yes. vehicle that got me here tonight. I have mm -hmm. you friends, you know, which is mm -hmm. so important. We thank John for offering us this opportunity. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It just goes on and on and on. Um, as far as the gratitude goes, but I think that if we have, you know, I know it's overused, but this attitude of gratitude, when I got there, because I didn't start it when I was a wee tot, you know, by any means, but when I finally got it, it has changed my life. And I, mm -hmm. I just really tell you that when I get up in the morning, that's the first thing I think about. It's the last thing I think about at night when I say my prayers is the gratefulness that I, I have. And well, it allows us, to, it really allows us to get into our center. And it allows us to even be more creative when we can be grateful. And yes. gratefulness is, it gets me out of any funk. You know that. Um, we're, we've been besties for a while. And I will pick up the phone and call Helena. And we have this uh, two-minute rule that <laughs> it's okay. And it's in my husband's book. He adopted that thing. You don't go past two minutes. Because otherwise, it starts <laughs> dumping the bad chemicals into your system. So, yeah, so we have that two-minute rule, and the one way to get out of it is going into gratitude, mm -hmm. doing a heart lock-in, and doing that exercise that really changes the DNA in your system in and of that moment. Love is the only mo emotion that does that and gets you out of any funk, anytime, anywhere. And so we, we do have that, that gratefulness going on, and, and it just does make a big difference. It makes a big difference. So there, Maura. So there. You want, to, you want to say something? You want to comment? Want, want you got me thinking. <laughs> you mentioned October. You're talking about all these things. And I thought, October, what did that month generally mean for me? As a young After person, you're hunkering down in the closet. Oh, wait. That was last month. I know. But October, if I look back, I was old when I was young. I was very oh, old and very so serious well when I was young. Oh, that is so well expressed. Yes. If, all you have to do is look at pictures of me and you yes. can see it. Very serious. Do you know as soon as you were going back October, and I'm thinking, what do I remember about October's when I was young? I remember when JFK was shot. <gasps> oh, I do. Too. I remember losing my grandfather two weeks before that. It was October. Oh. It was that same season. I lost all four of my grandparents between their latter 50s and their early 60s. I remember October as being the month when up in New Jersey where I grew up where all the leaves would fall off the trees. So here you get a person carrying a lot on her shoulders who feels old when she's young. So when I think about October, in the past, I think about being old. That's a bad Here anchor. I am now. Yeah, yeah, but listen, yeah. but I didn't, wasn't thinking about it. So right. back. But this is the good part, and it all kind of works together. Now, you would say I'm in the fall of my, <laughs> my life, right? But guess yeah. what? Yes, guess Frank. what? <laughs> I am actually in the spring of my life. Now, this is bizarre. Even though I watched so much death, and I was aware of death as a young person, I have found a spring of life within me, probably because I kept going back in, back in, back in. Right. I wanted a life. I wanted to find happiness. And it does come from that being grateful, focusing on things that are good, yes. focusing on things that are hopeful. Mm -hmm. And then I'm so, I am so committed to that, I would say, mm -hmm. that when I go and I speak, and I, I think I mentioned before we get started in a few maybe less than two weeks, Jimmy and I leave. We'll be in seven cities, five different countries, and I'll be speaking maybe 15 times while I'm gone. But it's all about helping other people, whether they're university students, young leaders, whatever, 
finding joy within, yes. finding something good from within, because we don't change our lives, and therefore we don't change the world no, that's until true. we make that choice from that's within right. that we can choose the world and the life we want, and it all has to do with our focus. And you, so I have to. Give I you, might. It might be October. I'm in spring. You know what? No, it, that's <laughs> that because is it's a, all regrowth. That's so we, fabulous we say, that you're we saying say that. Too that this is this is a uh, rebirth. A kind of a rebirth That's because a rebirth you know people it is and yeah. i'm always looking to bring that remembrance of the yes. idea of rebirth to everybody because i feel we already have it within us we do but if we allow everything on the outside our thought life yes. our circumstances our losses whatever it may be to daunt us and to become our identity yes then we stopped going within and we stopped drawing out of that life that we have or that springtime that's right that's and, like, and you had to face that at a young young age if you see photos of me there's some i look catatonic in. Wow. It's really interesting, and I'm that talking about five sad years old. Growing up, that's where I was. My grandmother used to call me uh, waterworks because I was always crying. But I literally made a decision. I had to decide over and over and over again mm -hmm. that I will grow up to be happy and free. And you know what? I am. And at still what age, can't remember what, names. At what age did you pull yourself out of that? It was a continuous thing. That time when I had to leave law school, somebody and what said did your to me, "I'm we. Ne I never. Well, asked I, you. I was paying for law school, so that was my. Oh, so nobody paid for it. No, I couldn't get the guilt. <laughs> okay. At least on oh, that level. No guilt trip then. But I was still here. It for many for many years thereafter, decades after I think. Yeah. But I made the decision over and over and over again. Do you ever say to yourself when you're in bed, oh my gosh, the alarm went off, I have to get up, I have to face people, whether it's people in school, or I have to face a boss, or I have to face a spouse, or I have to face face mm -hmm. friends that really are not good friends, or I have to face financial issues, health issues. We literally have to go over and over and over again to recharge and rethink and refocus and go to that place of gratefulness. Mm -hmm. You know, years ago, they didn't teach that. Oh, I had to yeah. teach it to myself. We all did. Little by little generation. and learn it. Yes, yeah, yes. but now we have more of it. Yes. Well, we had Thanksgiving back then. Yeah. We and did, we had Thanksgiving. We did. We had Thanksgiving. We had Thanksgiving. We had but about to be really, thankful. I really don't, I mean, other times of the year, I mean, maybe occasionally at church, but I don't really want to, I mean, gratefulness was not a topic that we spoke no, of. Often. But you know what? It, Whether it was in my family, with my friends, it just wasn't. Um, and that's why I don't think I got there for quite some time because I. It, it goes back to the choice. We make the choices. I, you know, and that's where I, you know, you make a choice. I can be, you know, we've all had crap in our lives. We've all had crap. Yes. Really? Barbara and I were both single moms. We've mm. all had crap in our lives. And you know, you make a choice. It is a choice. And it all sometimes, comes right down sometimes choice. it just goes. You know, I'd say, God, just allow me to keep on keeping on, mm -hmm. because yes. I didn't. You know, I didn't. I didn't have. I couldn't even find anything to be grateful about, other than my kids. But you know, maybe my kids weren't happy with me that day, or they were with their dad, or the, you know, there was always money issues. I mean, there. But you still, you have choices. But you become stronger for it, yes. and that's how we become light workers and yes. give back. And what you're doing is you're taking that passion, living somebody else's dream, and showing those that are living that very same type of lifestyle today, living somebody else's dream, that you too can make those choices. Yes, you did. You Got to take a break. Go, We're going to be go. right back after okay. this. at a certain age so this is supposed to happen no it's not supposed to happen
at a certain age, so this is supposed to happen. No, it's not supposed to happen. Exactly. Because I got questions. So I was. That's when, I they, was. when you suck it up, Buttercup, yeah. and you do the work, and that's right. what happens. Right. Do you know? I know we're back, but we're in this really good conversation here talking about, <laughs> well, you know, wh what was it? What was it that helped us get out of our own way? And do you know what did it for me? Was when I became pregnant, young and pregnant. I was like 20, 21 when I was pregnant with my son, Jason. And do you know that's when, and I don't know if it was October that I reflected, but I was married. We had been married about a year and a half. Very unexpected. Both my husband and I at the time were both off work. And uh, here I am, pregnant, standing in the in the unemployment line. Back then, you could not collect unemployment if you were pregnant. Now it's against oh, really? the law. Oh, yeah. So I try to hide my stomach. My mother-in-law at the time would say, "Oh, you look great." And I was like, "Out like this? I'm only five foot one, right?" But we need we needed the check. But it was during that pregnancy when I looked back at my life as a grown woman now. And really having that incessant want and need to make a difference in my baby's life and not follow the same path that I saw. Not that my parents were horrible parents, but parents do the best they can with what they have to work with. Agreed. And at that yeah, time, absolutely. we were just saying during the break, back when Helena and I were, you know, doing our thing, it was... It was a good thing to just get, you know, get that diamond ring and get married, leave the house. Well, I think we were molded for it. I we mean, were. You know, that's my we mom were. never worked outside of the home. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. And, um, you know, I and I was expected to cook and learn to cook sure. and learn to clean and learn to have and have babies. Even to the point that when I said I'm getting divorced, they were like, "Well, why?" I'm like, "Well, this, this, this. well, did he did he do this to you? No. Did he do that? No. Well, then why?" Because yeah. that wasn't acceptable, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, no. So I had I had a lot of pushback, and but I do think that you know as life goes on, what I see is like I I sometimes now see that it's kind of good to go back and incorporate those things that you know the cooking and the and the the craftiness yes. for lack of a better yes. term are are valuable traits that I learned. And maybe even put aside for a short time because, you know, when I was a single mom, we ate a lot of McDonald's. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you realize that how important a family dinner can be or how important. Mm -hmm. We just did this Absolutely. in our house. We got in this habit that we were eating, all, even though I was cooking a lot of it, we were eating everything in front of the TV. We just, there's two of us, and we just found that that's what we were doing. And I don't know how we got there, but all of a sudden... Um, um, you know, I served a couple of meals in the dining room table and my husband said, I like this. He said, I get to look at you. I get to talk to you because our chairs are side by side. So he's looking, we're both looking at the TV. And so we're now eating more at the dining room table. And I like that. And I'm cooking a little bit differently. You know, I mean, it's an ongoing thing. But what I'm saying is there are always little things that we can pull back from that. It wasn't like all that was wasted. Is well, you all know, like kids today, I mean, they're not. They're not having meals at a table anymore, and they're You're not right. eating together. And that was one of Can my I best add times growing to up. This too? Yes, because this is coming full circle. And I was thinking about this the other day in your generation, and it could have been part of mine as well. It's just that I was geared to be the lawyer, so therefore marriage and being <laughs> home with kids wasn't was part a no, of it. No. But. Um, back then, you're right, people would go and they'd be all looking for the ring and walking down the aisle. All the music was all about getting married. And possibly then with the kids. wrong person. <laughs> you're right. But that was all it was. So if you didn't fit into that thing, you were maybe a social outcast. But then if you wanted to do something else, you were a social outcast. Either way. Okay. Right. But I want you to think of something. There are women today that really wish, or families today, that really are missing out on something mm -hmm. about being a family, mm -hmm. about sitting together yeah. and having a meal, about feeling like, oh, this is our family, this is our home. Mm -hmm. And why can't we, and I think about this all the time, because I, I write about culture and I'm always watching shifting cultures, can't we take the best of the past? 
and the best of what's new and find and new ways together. to put them together mm -hmm. so that you yeah. may be in a season of your life where you are a mom, you are at home, you are doing things, and maybe you feel like your life appears small, but then again, you're learning how to make a home, you're learning how to mm -hmm. cook, you're providing that sense of home. Then later when you get older, it could be in reverse. Mine was kind of reverse. I yes. was, had a corporate yes. career before. Mm -hmm. Then you get out and you explore your career. You, you maybe even go back to school and do other things. Can we be gracious people who give other people that, that awareness and that ability to be all that they are and not to even say it has to be just this way or it has to be that way? Sure. But I do think that there are children today and even couples that maybe are missing out on mm -hmm. what does it mean to be a nice family? Oh, my goodness. I, I think so, too. I've got a one minute. A one minute. What? You. What is it? Or, or, All right. Or, it's Say, can I short. add something else? Because yeah, I want to look Because I love listening to this, and and this is there's a lot of truth to that. We can do that. We can bring that all together. Well, sometimes there's an anti-family sentiment, and to the same degree that years ago there was a sentiment against divorce. Right. So why not let's let's not just try to judge other people, but let's see if we can infuse and be a good example, mm -hmm. and maybe fill in some gaps for other people or help people along sure. on their path. Sure. Okay. I wanted to go back to something else you were talking about. You went through difficult times. and But during the break, we were talking about, back in the day, we didn't always have ways to figure out how to get out of where we were. Right. I was younger, and you know what I would do? They didn't have all these self-help books, although if they did have any, I would look them up. My big thing to get encouraged and to encourage myself, I would read biographies. And in every single biography... Amelia Earhart was one of my see? favorites. Yeah. I read every <laughs> single one of them. But in every biography, if you ever notice, these people all start out as little children. They're from every different background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's something in them that wants to do something, but they always have something to overcome. Yes. And it's in the process of overcoming that they become their bigger version. They overcome some of the mental obstacles, physical obstacles, social obstacles. Right. They literally use their trials to move into something greater and then they become bigger people and they help usually bring other people along with them. So back in the day, biographies were my big thing to give me the world and say, oh, there's other ways to live. There's other yes. ways to think. There's other ways to grow. And I would vicariously live through all these people's biographies. See, that's very interesting. And biographies. so we could find things. And that was a commonality among all of those people. And today, yes. there that's a I mean, it's a commonality with a, probably a high percentage of people, but a lot of them don't know that they have that and that they, it's the, it's the life lessons. It's it exactly. It's, it's the, the human life. condition. Yes. It, you could take somebody else's story and then just insert your life, your life mm -hmm. details into mm -hmm. that story. We're, uh, stories are so powerful. That's right. Oh, and we all have, it's funny, somebody was talking about the hero within us. We all do have the hero within mm -hmm. us. And we find and relate to that hero as we go through some of those challenges, yes. some of which feel like they're incredibly daunting. But we come out better and more lively. And right. we're grateful when we're done. Exactly. We come out more grateful we and do. more gracious. We do. We do. Because sometimes it takes those trials and tribulations yes. to really go through. Uh, and then when you do go through those, you go, oh. I'm glad that's over. I'm so grateful that I have shoes on my feet and that I am able to wear glasses, even though they're a few old, a few years old, but I have glasses that I can see and just our overall health. We have about a minute. Now we is this have the one end minute. of the show? This is, I can't believe it. Can already, I give something away? I, you know what? I was getting to that because I didn't even know I was going to. For everybody. Including us. You better be fast. 45 better, seconds. Okay. Do it eight this, The style. Art of Happiness. I have a book on influence for anyone who'd like to go to Mora at moraforyou.com. Write me, Mora at moraforyou.com and ask me for a free book on influence. Help and discover it's okay. how influential you are. Good. And there it's just go. good, happy stuff for everybody. Good. It will be happy stuff That's for great. everybody. That's and great. Mora actually has different books in there for just about anything that you want to find more about. <laughs> you have a problem? About. I got a book on it now. <laughs> <laughs> She's lived it through. She's lived no, through it. how to find your happy oh. in everything. <laughs> you guys are great. This has been a great show. And until we meet again, I wish you both a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. And you're years. going to be traveling. So we right. may not see you till when? December, January? We'll be back in December. All right. Well, we want to thank you for joining us and uh, have a great safe uh, pumpkin day tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.